Hello, this is Dr. Burton, and I'm going to be starting a series where we discuss rethinking faith and reason. This series is inspired by a talk that I gave for the Women in Apologetics conference, and that was a Christian audience, and I used some scripture verses to talk about what faith might mean, and that has inspired me to give a broader context to the conversation about rethinking faith and reason. So I have a thesis statement. So here's what I'm going to do today. Today I'm going to talk about what's the problem, what's the solution to the problem, and what are the details of the solution. All right, so uh, one of the notable challenges to Christianity, and I would say all religion, in the modern and postmodern eras is the apparent conflict between faith and reason. We need to think through the nature of the challenge and to respond with a fresh approach that will enable us to break new ground and lay a deeper foundation upon which to begin to rebuild the Christian worldview in our day. Now I'm saying Christian, but um, think about how these challenges come against religion of all kinds. The domain of faith and reason is that of authority or epistemology. Epistemology is the starting point of any worldview. I often talk about epistemology as the ground upon which we build our worldview. So you have to start with epistemology. It comes first. It asks the question, how do we know things? And upon that, we can build a foundation, which is usually metaphysics, how, uh, what is real. And once we answer that question, what is real, we can start building our world and life view, which has to do with our view of the good life, our values and attitudes, how we live our life, how we make decisions. So there's a structure to a worldview, starting with epistemology, and epistemology asks the question, how do we know? Now, historically, there have been several uh, possible answers, one of them being tradition, which is something we all have as part of our upbringing, tradition, common sense, where appearance is reality, intuition, liver knowledge. And oftentimes these sources lead us into skepticism or fideism. Skepticism says nothing is clear to reason. Fideism says nothing is clear to reason, but we have to believe anyway. Both assumption that nothing is clear, that we cannot know. So here's the challenge. The popular view of faith both within and outside the church, is that faith is belief without proof or understanding. That faith is blind. You've heard this, right? Faith is blind belief, a leap in the dark. Uh, you have to turn off your mind to accept these things. Belief in the unbelievable. That's what I've heard too. Some Christian philosophers and theologians have contributed to this view based upon their view of how we know things. For example, Thomas Aquinas, following Aristotle, thinks our knowledge comes through the senses, but our knowledge of divine things comes through faith in scripture. So if you start with the senses that all, all of our knowledge is through seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, well, things like God, the human soul, an afterlife, uh, that Jesus is the Messiah, these are things we can't see with our eyes. Um, so Aquinas and some other philosophers would have us believe and uh, trust based on the authority of the church, based on the authority of the scriptures. So here's where a kind of tradition comes in, right? But a lot of people have found it difficult to just believe, right? Um the unbelieving world has benefited by propagating the view that faith and reason are in conflict, that faith is subjective and that reason, read science, is objective, that faith claims cannot be proven and so must be kept out of the public, particularly education. This has stifled religious public discourse and relegated Christianity to the private sphere. And well, it should be if it isn't something based on reason, something that is common to all people, that is graspable by all. So um, the world 
benefits from saying that faith is blind because then they don't have to discuss it. The consensus is that faith is blind because it cannot prove its claims empirically. Like I said, you can't prove these things through science or the senses. Because it cannot prove its claims, the content of faith must be based on something other than evidence, such as subjective feelings or experience. And sometimes believers don't help their cause much because they use their personal experience to try to persuade people. And that's not always persuasive. Notice the contemporary emphasis on experience, though. By the world, all of our knowledge comes through the senses, and by the popular church. I know because deep down inside I have this feeling, I have this experience of something. There's a lot of appeal to experience inner experience. So the problem may have to go back to a false view of how we know authority. This deep down inside might be your intuition. Um, the knowing by seeing is uh, an assumption of an aspect of science, scientism we can call it. So here's the problem. The senses cannot deliver knowledge of what is not seen. So there's skepticism about the unseen on behalf of the world. In addition, because the senses cannot prove things such as the human soul, the Trinity, the divinity of Christ, believers appear to be required to take a leap of faith. This is called fideism. Belief without proof. Belief without understanding. Both skepticism in the world and fideism in the church agree that we cannot really have certainty about the most important things. And that's tragic. That it's not clear that God exists, what a human being is, and what is good and what is evil for human beings. That's the stuff of a worldview, view, uh, our metaphysics and our ethics. If we can't know those things, then everyone's taking a blind leap. I'm going to make the case that it's not only uh, religious people or Christians who are sometimes fideistic in their commitments. It's something the secular world does as well. Think of um, commitment to a philosophy like Marxism. Is it grounded in reality? Is it something that's proven? Or is it also requiring a kind of blind belief? So fideism isn't just something that, quote unquote, religious people do. It may be something that a lot of people do. If we don't have proof, then we have belief based on something else, fideistic. It's not based on truth and proof. All right, what's the response to this problem of fideism and skepticism? It's to affirm that the basic things are clear to reason which is something that needs a lot of unpacking, but I've said this a lot. And what are basic things? Basic things are the, the foundation and the goal, the basic questions of life. And those things have to do with metaphysics and ethics. So the basics of the basics include either God exists or God does not exist. That's a basic question, and it's clear either way. Um, it's clear either that God exists or that God does not exist. And if you want to say that it's clear that God exists, here are the things you would have to show. It's clear that something must be eternal, that matter exists and matter is not eternal, that the soul, the human soul exists and that the soul is not eternal. And that would leave some other spirit being eternal. So I'll go through that again. You'd have to show Something must be eternal. Matter exists. Matter is not eternal. The soul exists and the soul is not eternal. Therefore, some other spirit is eternal. Now, the basic things include human nature as well. And it's clear that humans are rational, political animals. Aristotle said it, and I'm going to affirm it. Uh, you can doubt that we're rational, but when you doubt it, you're using reason to doubt it. So... I think it's self-evident that we're rational beings, uh, that we're thinking things. Now, we're not always using our reason, let's be honest. Um, it's self-evident that we're social beings. We didn't bring ourselves 
into existence. We rely on others. We're born into a family. Um, we're born into a society, into a world where we're not disconnected from others. So we're social beings. We're political beings. And we have a body. So we're animals. So um, we can figure out what human nature is. I think the modern period in philosophy has really blurred this area. We, we don't know what we are anymore. But I think it's clear what human beings are, and we could know that. And if we could know that humans are rational animals, political animals, then we could know what's good for rational animals. Aristotle says the good for a being is based on the nature of a being. So if we could know that we're rational, we would know it's good to use your reason. And guess what? When you use your reason, you find meaning. And when you find meaning, you understand things. Things make sense. And we have a certain joy in that. Aristotle also said humans, all humans desire to know. And so this is part of our nature. We're rational. We need to know. So it's good for us. But what's evil for us? The opposite. It's contrary to the nature of a being. So if you're a rational being and you're not using your reason, then you won't find meaning. You won't understand. Things will become boring. And when things are boring and you're a meaning-seeking being, you will find search for meaning somewhere else. And usually humans go into excess because we need, we need the infinite. And finite things don't meet that need. And so we keep going after finite things. And we waste our time, our effort, our lives. And we feel guilt about that. So this is bad. We'll call it spiritual death, meaninglessness, boredom, guilt. And its opposite is spiritual life, where we have meaning, understanding, growth in understanding, wisdom. These are things we want, right? So life and death are categories that are going to be connected to faith. We'll talk about, and I'm talking about a deeper sense of faith too. We're going to have to dig deeper. All right, I think this is a good place to pause. We talked today about one of the challenges to Christianity and to religion in general has been the apparent conflict between faith and reason. Uh, I'm suggesting that there's a popular view of faith called fideism, and it says that uh, nothing is clear to reason. The response is to affirm the basic things are clear to reason and to show those things. Now, I'm not doing that in this video, but uh, I have done parts of it in other videos. And there are books people have written that you could read about uh, these things. I'll put them in the program notes. How about that? So thank you for joining me today in discussing the uh, series I'm doing on rethinking faith and reason. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Okay, well...